Bang! These are instant classics and contemporary comedy gold. I would like to have a threesome, please. Don't think of it as a threesome. Think of it as having sex with your girlfriend while someone else also has sex with your girlfriend. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comedies from the first half of the 2010s. For our series on the top comedies of all time, we've chosen comedy films per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, watchability, and, of course, how funny they are. I'm, I'm not feeling whatever they're doing. Carlton, please, escort these two up. However, we're excluding romantic comedies like Crazy Stupid Love. Seriously? This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of comedic films from the 1930s to the 2000s. Go, 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 pick up me! Number 10. Pitch Perfect. Nothing makes a woman feel more like a girl than a man who sings like a boy. A comedy in the same vein as Mean Girls or Easy A, this film centers on a freshman named Becca Mitchell, who is cajoled by her father into joining her school's all-female singing group, the Barden Bellas. You gotta try something new, Beck. Join one club on campus. Take glee, add in some comedy, and Pitch Perfect is the outcome. Oh, John, you're so right, everything else seems wrong. Topped off with proven actors in the comedy genre. Seriously, you girls are awesome. Me horrible, I hate you, kill yourselves. And a number of toe-tapping musical scenes. <laughs> and this is a modern musical that'll keep you humming and cackling for days. I got a bag. Number 9. Ted Well, here I am. It was only a matter of time before Seth MacFarlane transferred his patented brand of Family Guy potty humor to the big screen. All you gotta do is not f*** up. Mark Wahlberg plays a grown man whose childhood wish has caused him and his sentient teddy bear to become best friends. I wish you could really talk to me, because then we could be best friends forever and ever. Even into adulthood. Ted, you gotta move out. What? At its core, the film is a buddy comedy about one man trying to mature. I just fought it. That was a man fight. <laughs> while his degenerate friend can't cope with change. I don't have to. I'm a f***ing teddy bear. The McFarlane touch? That degenerate friend is a talking teddy bear. You know what I like to do to her? Something I call a dirty fuzzy. Which means he can get away with far ruder jokes than your average human. I don't know that you want to go to a drug dealer with complaints. No, this I know this guy a long time. I've known him since 9-11. You remember I was like, oh shit, 9-11, I gotta get high. Number eight. She's very fond of me, you know. The Grand Budapest Hotel. Never seen her like that before. No, sir. She was shaking like a shitting dog. Truly. While Wes Anderson isn't known for laugh-a-minute screwball comedies. I go to bed with all my friends. manages to hit the right notes in this understated movie. Why do you want to be a lobby boy? Well, who wouldn't? At the Grand Budapest, sir. It's an institution. Very good. The film centers around the Grand Budapest Hotel's concierge, Monsieur Gustave. Well, hello there, chaps. As he uncovers a plot that has wrongfully sent him to prison. He's a ruthless adventurer and a con artist who preys on mentally feeble, sick old ladies. While the film is touching, we're brothers. As expected from the man who also gave us Moonrise Kingdom, it's Ray Fine's abrupt use of shocking expletives midway through eloquent speeches that really brings the laughs. Because if there's one thing we've learned from Penny Dreadfuls, it's that when you find yourself in a place like this, you must never be a candy ass. Number seven, Neighbors. You guys want to see something amazing? Yes, I want to see something amazing. The subject matter of Seth Rogen's films often follows a trajectory similar to his own personal life. I know. And Neighbors is no exception. This is so spontaneous. We're having sex one minute. Who knows what's going to happen next? Who knows what we'll be doing in 10 minutes? Rogen plays Mac, a young father who is dealing with the day-to-day -day perils of married life. She keeps, she keeps turning around. Turn around. Just look that way. Just turn around. Things get out of control when college student Teddy and his gang of frat boys move in next door. Oh, oh shit! Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry, man. Sorry my ball just got in your face. The film makes use of its R rating with some pretty raunchy scenes, while Zac Efron does well as the hateable fraternity ringleader. Let go. Let go. I'll never let go. 
I'll hold on to your balls forever. Number six. The city's dying for a hero. The other guys. What about nine million socially conscious and unified citizens all just stepping up and doing their part? Writer-director Adam McKay and SNL notable Will Ferrell are at it again in this comedy about two mismatched cops trying to prove themselves. I mean, when you hear hooves, you think horses, not zebras. What about donkeys or deer? They have hooves. What about bovine creatures? Mark Wahlberg stretches his comedic muscles to great effect as Terry Hoyts. Jerk off. A detective who has been demoted for accidentally shooting New York Yankees shortstop Derek Jeter. Don't make me shoot, I'll do it! Are you deaf? You hear me, you freeze? You dick! I'm Derek Jeter, you shot me! You cost me 20 grand on that game! Along with Farrell's pimp talking, Grand Theft Auto driving, Little River Band listening Alan Gamble. I've always got Little River Band loaded up here. I got six discs in here. The two are primed to replace the force's top cops, who fell to a, a peculiar fate. There goes. Number five, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Well, I knew I personally rocked, but I never suspected that we rocked as a unit. Ever had to compete with a loved one's exes? We bet they weren't all martial arts trained killing machines. Scott Pilgrim has to face all of his crush's ex-boyfriends and girlfriend in order to rescue her and win her affections in this quasi-action comedy. Scott! Evil ex! Right. Filled to the brim with all kinds of video game, sitcom, <laughs> and movie references, Scott Pilgrim manages to be deeply nostalgic while maintaining a fun, wacky plot with an awkward as ever Michael Sarah at the helm. You made me swallow my gum. It's gonna be in my digestive tract for seven years! Number four, Hot Tub Time Machine. Oh man, you guys gotta get in here, it's gonna change you! When three middle-aged down-and-outs discover a questionable time machine in the form of a hot tub. It must be some kind of hot tub time machine. They use it to right the wrongs in their past. What color is Michael Jackson? Black. John Cusack, Craig Robinson, and Rob Corddry form a versatile comedic trio on a collision course with all kinds of 80s references, bad hair, fashion, and even a few notable cameos from Chevy Chase and William Zabka of Karate Kid fame. Well done, I like your style. I like your style. He's very creative. Number three. This is the end. I got this. The apocalypse cometh. It's all in here. And the most recognizable faces in comedy today join forces to meet it head on. What's happening? All right, all right, all right. Everybody listen up, listen up. Who took my f***ing cell phone, man? With more cameos than a Simpsons special. Hey, what's up, man? Y'all cool? The film feels like a chilled out get together with good friends at James Franco's house. Ain't no party like a no better party cause a no better party no stop! Too bad the world is literally burning up with hellfire outside. This is the end serves as an ode to the cast who play heightened versions of themselves. Nobody got sucked up in here. I got sucked off here. And their previous roles we've come to love. Bro! Number two, Bridesmaids. I feel relaxed and I'm ready to party. SNL alums Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph reunite for this comedy about a single 30-something woman who can't quite let go when her best friend is set to be married. Keep smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me. Annie Walker puts in her best efforts not to be left alone. Help me, I'm poor. While Lillian moves on to bigger and better things. Are you f***ing kidding me? This film proved to be Melissa McCarthy's big break as she stole the show. Look away! Or the sink as the crass and unkempt sister-in-law, Megan. I'm not with him. Sorry. Oh. All right. I'm glad he's single because I'm going to climb that like a tree. These maids get the honor of being number two on our list just like they made number two in the streets. Well, you're really doing it, aren't you? You're just shitting in the street. Before we unveil our pick for comedy of the first half of the 2010s, here are a few honorable mentions. Shouldn't somebody stop this? Yeah, how good this feels? 
I'm gonna cover the whole outside of my house in this material. Hey, zip your face. Zip my face? Are you serious? Yeah, he said zip your face. That's your best line? That's your best tough guy line? You heard me, zip your face. Why don't you zip your vagina, Raymond Burr? That's my favorite. Rape, what? Rape, rape, that's a rape. This is what raping is. You, you're a raper and you've raped me, that's a rape! Now you can do this on your own, but everyone knows that no one likes to be alone. So get on the floor and grab somebody. Okay, so we'll just say there's a hell. There is, just so we're clear. Okay, so for argument's sake. No, there's no argument. It's there, right below our feet, right above the Orient. People now. Number 1. 21 Jump Street Perhaps the most entertaining crime-fighting duo since Batman and Robin. Let's just finger each other's mouths. No! Yeah. No, you're not we got fingering to. my mouth! Do you want to die? Do you want to die? Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum team up to take down a nefarious high school drug ring. Officers Schmidt and Jenko are called upon due to their youthful looks. You look really old. Were you held back or something? Or? No. Well, at least one of them to disguise themselves as two high school students on opposite ends of the geek jock spectrum. Carry the two changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. <laughs> you, science. The movie is chock full of high octane stunts, bone tingling shootouts, you shot me in the dick! Ah! and no holds barred drug trips that make this the outright funniest movie we've seen in a long time. I like that. Put your tongue back in your mouth in your mouth and close it what are you doing stop it actually that's not bad <laughs> do you agree with our list this is not gonna work this is garbage what's your favorite 2010s comedy you didn't specify you didn't specify for more hilarious top tens published every day be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com i should probably not just stay here watching i should take action